Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's video newsletter well we're going to be looking at the central composite design the the straight central composite design compared to the central composite face design what are the benefits what are the risks of both central composite designs now before we get on to today's subject matter just a reminder of how you can support the channel please subscribe please leave comments that's always fantastic but if you want to go further please look at the buy me a coffee donation page click on that link and leave a small donation it's always fantastically helpful but if you want a textbook of some of the material that are in the videos drink tea and read the paper if you're doing six sigma green belt or black belt training people find this text fantastically helpful click on the link at lulu.com it's in the description below and buy the latest version of drink tea and read the paper so thank you very much for that support let's get on to today's subject so we're going to be looking at design of experiments and in particular central composite design and I suppose in brackets the face design now this video comes directly from some work I've been doing with a client we've been trying to uh, understand their manufacturing process we've been finding the process very difficult to model uh, I can't get my models to confirm and essentially I've been using the central composite face design is, is where I've, I've ended up in the technique that I've used and what I've realized is this has some limitations and I should be using the full central composite design and I really wanted to pass this um, I wanted to pass this knowledge on to you folks especially because I recommend the face design in my methodology so let's just talk about my basic design of experiments methodology and now we end up with the face design and then we'll look at the limitations of the face design and the problems that I've come across so my normal DOE strategy so my DOE process is always to start simple so I always start two level and for the purpose of this video I'm going to suggest that we start two level modeling I would often start two level screening and, and with this client that's where we started we were screening at two level first then we started modeling at two level so we're going to just assume that we're with two level modeling because this is where my this is where my problem started so what that means of course is we're just if we're doing three a three factor two level DOE we are just testing at the eight corner points all right now then people often think that the two level DOE is too simple to model their process because they think it's a linear we're going to create linear models and of course what they always think is well if my process looks like this I would already know that that's way too simple my problem can't be linear can't be a two level problem um, but that's just one factor what I can tell you is when you've got three factors you've got the main effects you've got interactions uh, the physics and the maths is too complicated for me to draw it's too complicated for you to understand in your head two level DOEs multifactorial DOEs are highly complex so these things often describe the process so that's where I start and of course the point about this is it's only it's only eight tests it's only eight runs long so what I'm trying to do is to not burden the 
the engineering department. I'm not trying to burden the manufacturing process with too many tests. We're trying to get this knowledge in the shortest possible tests, okay? So I'll often do this. Now my strategy then is to confirm at the midpoint. So I do a test effectively slap bang in the middle of that pattern because if this line is true then of course when I try to hit that point if it's genuinely a straight line I of course will and I get confirmation but if it's really curved of course I don't land on the green line I land up here somewhere and this is the point where I use the face design. Okay, so what I will now do is I will add more data to the, um, to the data I've already collected to turn it into a face design. So you can see here, look, these are some notes from my Six Sigma training. Here is the central composite face design. You can see the, uh, the design space in this diagram here. But also you can see the pattern. Now look at the top, the eight rows. If I've only got three factors in this test, the eight rows at the top, what are those eight rows? Well, that's the original eight run experiment that I ran at the beginning, the two level experiment. Then the next two or three rows, what are they? Well, they're the center points. That's the confirmation test that I just did in the middle there. So I've collected all of this data here in this experiment. The only bit I've got left is this bottom portion. So what I tend to do is I tend to run the face design and I tend to add those additional data points, usually only an extra six or eight rows of data. And now I've got a, a, a curved model and I've got it in a very efficient way. I, I only went for the three model because I had to and I've gone for the minimum amount of tests to get a DOE that works. So that's why I tend to go for the face design. The other reason, of course, is I've had a tendency to put these points here at the absolute maximum and the minimum of the design space. So normally, of course, the, the traditional central composite asks you to go out here onto these alpha values here I can't go out here because I've already maxed out my design space. So I'm kind of stuck with the, the central composite, okay? So what I end up with is I end up with a model that does this. Okay, so I end up testing in three places and I end up with diagrams, etc. That, that look like this. Now, where have I come against a problem? So as far as I'm concerned, what's the, what's the bonus of the face design? I augment into it. I don't have to do it if I don't need to because if I confirm here, I stop halfway down the experiment. So the face design is a super efficient way of doing a two level if that's all you have to do, but going the minimum amount of data to get the maximum amount of information. And that's why I use the face design. Now the true central composite, of course, would have tested in five places. So we would have sort of tested like this, and I would have extra data here and here. Um, so the, if I just draw up the central composite with only two factors, you end up with these tests like this. So you test at the corners, you test at the middle, but you test out on these alpha values. Okay, so that would be the traditional central composite. So of course, I'm testing in five places. So what's the problem I've had with the face design? Well, the problem I've had is I tried to confirm here and here. Places where I didn't collect data so that I can prove that my model works, that it actually describes the curve correctly. And on both occasions, I underpredicted this point 
sorry, I over predicted this point and I over predicted that point. And it was confusing the hell out of me. I'm thinking I've collected data. The DOE data looks fantastic. It's very repeatable. The process is very well controlled. I shouldn't be getting problems. What's wrong with my mathematics? And here's what's wrong. The model, see this curve, is describing something that looks sort of like this. But the curve I've really got, let's put it in black, looks like this. So I'm, I'm over predicting here and I'm over predicting here. So actually if you look there is a kind of a tight curve and there's a, there's a wider curve that, that could describe the data that I've been collecting. And what I've realized is that the, the central composite, because it goes in five places, it's going to describe a much smoother curve. It's going to get the shape much better. So I've had to kind of say, throw all that away let's do a proper central composite design because my technique of augmenting into a face design just didn't work and although it was confusing me i've sort of got there in the end and we're about to do a full central composite design to describe this curve so i'm i'm seeing from the from the data that we've collected so far, I'm seeing a black curve. I'm not seeing the tighter green curve. And that's why I'm under predicting. I haven't quite got a model that works yet. So we're gonna have to go and do the central composite and get the thing to work properly. But I can definitely see the benefit of the full central composite. I sometimes advise people, you don't need five data points. What I've just learned is sometimes you do need five data points. It, it all depends on the shape of the, you know, if the curve is like this, or if the curve is sort of slightly tighter, you know, you can sort of see one, two, three, four, five, would pick that up better. Whereas three data points is gonna do that. And that's what's happening. So sometimes because of the shape of these curves, the five data points of the full central composite is absolutely what you need. Um, this is my methodology. I've used it for 20 years. I rarely get a problem with it, especially on such a good process that's so well controlled. But you know what? We all learn something new and I've learned now why sometimes the central composite should be the weapon of choice. Sometimes the face design is a more efficient way of doing it but you have to be careful. I always say to my clients, when you give up data, you have to understand you are giving up information. And I beat that into my clients, but you know what? I forgot it myself. I'm giving up data with the face design. I'm only testing. I'm only testing in three places, corner points and, and kind of center points here. I'm only testing in three places and I gave up data and I have to give up information when I do that. And sometimes that information is crucial to getting the right model. So there's the central composite face design. There's the full central composite design. You collect more data, you get more information. Sometimes you need that additional information and that would be one of the reasons why you need it. A tighter curve. Actually, my client told me that the, the physics looked like this before we started, and the penny didn't drop. You know, I've learned the hard way. We've, we've done all the experiments, and we've had to throw all the data in the bin, but we have learned. We've learned how the process works. That's what a data, that's what a DOE is all about. Guys, go use these tools. Whatever you're doing, two level, three level, face design, um, full central composite design, the power of a designed experiment. You generate the maximum amount of information with the minimum amount of data. You can then learn how your process works and then you can make more money. <laughs>